Pleased to be joined by the Director of Athletics at Old Dominion University, Dr. Camden wood Selig. Would appreciate the time today. Thank you, Ted. Good to be with you. Less than 24 hours ago, it was announced that Old Dominion University would not have fall sports in 2020. Tell us about the group that got together for these past several months, worked through this, and came to this decision. Well, this is our 22nd week since we remember when we were sent home from Frisco, Texas, from the men and women's basketball tournament. And none of us really envisioned how long it would last or, or what twist it, it might take. But now here we are in our 22nd week. We, we thought in March and April that for sure the fall would be a, a safe bet, that the coronavirus would uh, be negligible and we would be back to business as usual. Uh, however, probably for the last three or four months, uh, President Broderick and I have been really paying close attention, not just to ODU and, and to, to our campus, but what's going on around the state, what's going on certainly in, in Hampton Roads, and then obviously what's going on around our conference. And uh, the good thing for us is, is our league has never uh, been a league at this point where we've all got to do the same thing. Uh, the, the, our commissioner, Judy McLeod, has always stressed that, you know, if individual institutions need to make decisions that they feel are in their best interest, then they should be free to do so. And that's ultimately what it came down to. Uh, over the last several weeks, it really uh, has not decreased the, the, the amount of coronavirus. It's actually spiked among the 20 to 30 year range, you know, 20, 30 year olds, 22, 30 year olds have really exponentially increased in the coronavirus. We're getting ready to bring 18,000 students back to campus. Uh, we, we just felt that we were not in a position that we hoped we might be at this juncture to honestly think that we could have a, a safe uh, environment for our student athletes to compete against other schools from around the country. So it was a tough decision. Uh, we were able to talk to our coaches, we talked to student athletes, talked to our administration, talked to board of visitors, uh, kept in touch with our conference. But ultimately, at the end of the day, we just felt like this was uh, the best decision for ODU, ODU student athletes and their families. So many different reactions to this issue from the medical side and perhaps the logical side to the emotional side to the financial side. How do you make sure that you do the right thing for ODU because there are so many factors that had to, had to come into play. Yeah, there, there are a, a number of factors. There, there were three factors that we let influence the decision and finances were not one. Uh, this was not driven at all by economic impact. Uh, number one was health and safety of the student athletes and their respective families because we all know when ODU competes, we draw very well from parents, grandparents, uh, family members, as well as the community. So we, we didn't want any family members to be put in harm's way through our athletic competition. Number two, uh, we have a large population of international student athletes at Old Dominion. That's something we're very proud of. It increases the diversity, not only among our athletic population, but among our campus population. Uh, we were getting uh, some very strong feelings from our international student athletes of their lack of desire to return at this point in time to the U.S., not just Old Dominion, not just Hampton Roads, but when their families were watching what was going on across the United States, they were really hesitant to send their sons and daughters back to this environment that we're experiencing here because it's not like this in many international countries. So we, we didn't think we had a very good chance of getting many, if any, of our student athletes who are international back this fall. And think about soccer and field hockey who are heavily populated with international student athletes. So that was going to not only uh, impact the, the roster size, uh, it would also impact our uh, competitiveness. Uh, so that was number two. And then the, the schedule uh, was our third factor. Uh, field hockey was down to a six-game schedule. The Big East had cut everything. They were down to a six-game schedule, and over half of the field hockey Division I institutions 
had announced that they were not going to play field hockey this fall, which meant that the NCAA was not going to sanction a national championship, which ironically we were hosting at Old Dominion this fall, the, the national championship for, for field hockey. So we, we knew that field hockey wouldn't stand a chance at much of a season, six games max, no national championship. Men's soccer was down to eight soccer matches for the season. And we didn't think that would be a very rewarding or very worthwhile experience for our student athletes. So we made the decision to postpone the fall. And, and we hope that there can be a spring season for all of our fall sports. That's what we're crossing our fingers. That's what we're banking on. And I, I think that's, that's a realistic uh, hope that we can get there for spring competition for fall sports. But we just didn't feel that uh, everything uh, pointed in a favorable light to try and compete this fall. We will train and we will practice. We've made that commitment to all of our teams, our coaches, our student athletes. Training and practice is just as important as competition to student athletes because it's part of their regimen. It's part of their day-to-day -day activity. They've been doing it since they were very, very young. It's part of their, not only their physical health, but their mental and emotional health. It's important to keep that in front of them. So we will do everything we can for all of our student athletes going forward, despite not having fall competition, to make sure we allow them to, to train and to practice. Well, it's one thing for a league to endorse an institution to go out on their own when they feel it's in their best interest. It's perhaps another for an institution to go out on their own when they feel it's in their best interest. Now that that's happened for Old Dominion, reaction from Conference USA? I've gotten a number of emails and texts from the athletic directors within Conference USA, not only congratulating, applauding Old Dominion for our decision, uh, insinuating that they're not far behind, uh, that, that they are very close to being in a position where, where they would like to make uh, some decision whether they're either all in or uh, postponing the fall. Uh, our donors have been overwhelming in their communication to both President Broderick and myself uh, the last 24 hours saying, hey, great decision, great call. I know it was a very challenging and difficult one, but, but you made the, the right decision. Uh, athletic directors from around the country, I've, I've heard from a couple commissioners from other conferences, uh, you know, the eight athletic directors around the state, the Commonwealth of Virginia. So in my heart of hearts, I know we made the right decision for Old Dominion and for our community. Again, this is not a one-size-fits-all decision. Uh, every community is different. Every institution is di different. The coronavirus uh, is different in, in every area of our country. But for Old Dominion, uh, the time was right for this decision and announcement to allow everyone to proceed with that knowledge in mind and the time was right to make this decision. Moving forward, what can we say at this point in an ever-changing world about basketball? Yeah, now we need to really turn our focus and attention to our winter sports, basketball, swimming. Swimming has their first competition in, in mid-October. I, I don't think that's very viable. Basketball gets together in October in preparation for an early November start. I'm not so sure that's viable. I think we have to figure out what our protocol needs to be to ensure the health and safety of our athletes and our fans. And then after we figure out what that protocol might be, how is it best implemented from a timing standpoint? Personally, I, I think basketball and other winter sports would be well served if we all just agreed to put them as a January one start date or a Christmas holiday start date and, and try and give ourselves a little bit more time because we've already seen in the last 22 weeks that even though you think uh, time is, is an ally, uh, actually, on a virus standpoint, things change so slowly uh, that, that we do need to, to lengthen that runway uh, b between the winter sports season and where we are right now. In terms of the nuts and bolts uh, items, season tickets for football, for those that have come out and purchased them and supported the program, that's great. If they, what, what can they do right now with their season ticket purchases? Well, number one is, is we'd like for them to hold tight 
Uh, we hope to play, if not a full spring season, a modified spring season. So we'd like to think that, that we will be hosting them in S.B. Ballard Stadium at some point in the spring of, of 2021. So that's first and foremost. Uh, if, if we're not able to, to gather for football uh, in the spring, we hope they will you know, stay invested in us and, and count that toward uh, their next year's purchase. Or uh, what they really might want to do if we're not playing in the spring is consider making their uh, purchase of their season tickets this year, uh, turn that into a gift, turn that into a donation to support our 500 student athletes who will be here on campus this fall and spring pursuing their academic degree. And they can help us. You know, these are trying times for everyone, intercollegiate athletics notwithstanding. So they can consider making their commitment already uh, that's been extended to ODU Athletics and turn that into a contribution, a tax-deductible donation to support athletic scholarships for ODU student-athletes. It's important to, I think, emphasize that, that the scholarships and the funding for those scholarships is still necessary. The, the, the learning will go on for these student-athletes and the scholarship fund needs to be replenished, correct? If anything, our athletes are looking at taking more hours right now, especially the fall student athletes. They know that they're not going to be competing this fall. So this is a time where they might take an extra three or an extra six hours of class. And we pay by the hour. Our student athletes are like every other student at ODU. Uh, we pay for their education either through an athletic scholarship, which the university bills ODU athletics for, or if a student athlete is on a partial ride, we underwrite some of their athletic or some of their academic costs, their family pays for the rest. But if they're going to take an additional three or six hours this semester, because it's going to be a slow competitive season, that means our academic costs are going to increase. So our scholarship bill each year is a little over $5 million right now. We expect that to go up this fall and spring. So there's never been a, a time of greater need for our scholarship support than right now by our fans for ODU student athletes. What is your message to fans who are bitterly disappointed with this decision, but realize perhaps it was in the best interest of the student athletes, their families and everybody involved? I'm glad they're bitterly disappointed because that means they love ODU ODU athletics, they love sports. Those are the individuals that we rely on to be the backbone of our operation. So I know exactly how they feel. I know how frustrating this is, how frustrated they are. Uh, think about our student athletes who've worked their entire lives for four seasons of eligibility and what this means to them. So they, they have company, sadly, uh, but in, in reality, nothing is more important than everyone's health and safety. And at this particular time, there's no way we can guarantee that we are going to be able to ensure that to the level that we feel comfortable. So I hope they respect our decision, appreciate the fact that we appreciate them and their health, and that as soon as we can get back together for competition, we will certainly do it. And hopefully they'll come back with, with more ODU fans, uh, louder, uh, with, with the same pride that, that they've always shared for their ODU Monarchs. And they will appreciate it even more when we get back together. Sometimes when, when you get comfortable or used to certain things, you, you may take them for granted. Uh, I, I expect when we get back together, no one will take ODU athletics and the, the, the pure joy that that brings for so many when we get a chance to get back together. Dr. Wood Selig, Director of Athletics at Old Dominion University, thank you for your time. Thank you for you and everybody else's efforts uh, on uh, all of our behalf. And uh, let's go Monarchs. Absolutely. Thank you, Ted. Stay safe.